This is a very brief introduction to MATLAB, a very powerful software tool for simulation and calculation in engineering. So if you start up MATLAB, you will typically have this area here called the command window. This command window is where you can type different types of commands. Like you can assign a variable a name, say b equals 1. You can say c equals b plus 4. That's 3. So you can see that it takes these commands, it executes those commands, and in the workspace you have these different variables that have values here. So there are commands like whose, which will tell me what variables I have in the workspace, and what we know about it, like the size. And those values, we can have other types of data, not just values with numbers. We can have matrices. We can define matrices like A equals 1, 2, 3, 4. That matrix has four values. You see I put a space between 1 and 2 and a semicolon between 2 and 3. A semicolon makes a new row. A space makes a new column when you're assigning variables like that. We can make a vector like x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, which makes a row vector with four elements. We can make another type of vector, column vector, equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can make matrices, vectors, elements, and we can do things like, let's make a little value b equals 4, 6, so that if we're trying to solve ax equals b, we can find the inverse of a. We already have a, a matrix. So if I type a and hit return, it will show me what a is. I can say inverse of a times b. And that gives me my solution. If I say solution equals inverse of a times b, I know that solution is now in a variable. I can check my answer to say a times solution which should give me what B was. So if I want to know, remember what B was, I type in B, or I could just look up here in the workspace. If you have a lot of things, like I said before, you can type whose, who or whose, and they will give you information about what variables MATLAB knows about, what their size is. And if they're small enough, it will display the value up here in the workspace. Now, most of the time, you'll start with an editor. Type edit and hit return. It opens the editor window where you can type in things so that we don't have to go back and change values. We can say a equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Now if I save this value, I'm going to save this on my desktop. It's not a very good place to save. I'm going to save that file. So I saved it somewhere where I can get back to it. Now, a nice shortcut I like to use, I hit F5. It saves my file. Uh-oh. Cancel that. I forgot about paths. So I've saved this file, but MATLAB is currently looking at this directory. It's in this directory. It's not looking for files. It's only looking for files in that directory. So if I try and run this code by hitting F5, it will want to offer me to change to that folder. So if I hit change folder, it changes to wherever that file is found. So this file is on the desktop. So now if I run that file by hitting F5, function F5, it gives me a solution. We said, what would B? We use 4, 6. B equals 4, 6. So we can type that in. Solution equals inverse of A times B. We check it with A times solution. And we run all that code all at once. And we get to that solution. Now I can go back and change my problem a little bit. I can put different numbers in here and run it again. I don't have to type all those commands in. It runs through the entire set of these commands by changing the values in this editor window. It just changes a text file. That text file, you could edit and edit that text file with WordPad or Word or any text file editing software. But this is the one reason the one tied to MATLAB so that we can just run code very quickly. And it gives us things like these squiggly lines. Every time I run something, it spits out stuff to the screen. If I don't want to see those values displayed, I put a semicolon. Now when I run the problem, 
it only shows the solution, and A times the solution. So that way I don't see all this stuff, which could be a, a big issue if I were to make a, say I make a big matrix, uh, a random matrix with a thousand elements. If I do that, it tries to display all of those elements, which is not bad for a thousand elements. If I make a matrix with a million elements, it's probably going to sit there for a while trying to show all 1 million elements on the screen. Now, if I want to stop something like this, I can hit Control and C to interrupt, interrupt MATLAB. So I go back to the command window and hit Control C. But if we say R, R, R equals random this, and we put a semicolon, it will run that code very quickly, instantaneously. It just takes a while to put it on all the information on the screen, so suppressing the output to the display is often a good idea, using a semicolon at the end of the line. And sometimes MATLAB will give you error information, um, like it suggests why don't you use A backslash B instead of inverse of A. So sometimes MATLAB recognizes errors or suggests things that you can do better inside the editor. Some other things we like to do, we can make a vector of time values, like 0 by 0 0.1 to 10, maybe a, a value of y equals x, exp to the negative 0.2 of t. We can plot t comma y. And if that worked, it should make a plot. But I don't see it. Where did it go? Where's my plotting window? Something is locked up. I'm not sure. There it is. Where'd it go? Here's my figure. So my figure is right there. I had a little lag there. Let me run that again. My plot window is hidden. That looks like a plot of an exponential decay, starting at 1, going down towards 0. So we can make changes. We plan to change that 0.2 to 0.3. We run it. The figure should update. We change it to 0.7 and run this. We get a new figure. It's quickly converging to 0. So we can quickly make changes and make complex plots to analyze data inside of MATLAB. There's lots of powerful things that MATLAB can do. This is just showing you a little bit about the interface and how it works so that you have your variables and some of your commands in the file and where you can actually execute these commands. The text files, one thing I forgot to mention, they need to be named something without spaces or numbers. And then you can put numbers, but it can't start with a number. So it has to start with characters and then not have any spaces in the text file name because MATLAB treats that as a function name. Functions like sign or plot. I can type in the file that I want to run. E example run is my file name. I type that and it runs all of my commands. So you can't have spaces in your file names. And you can't start your file names with a number. You probably can't have any special characters in those file names either. So just letters and numbers, start with letters, no spaces. And it MATLAB files are always .m, but it's just a text file. So I think that's enough for today. We'll do some of these examples in lab to generate some plots.